gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me to this forum. Uh, as the president of PD has said, we come here in the name of the NGO, and the forum is called Women's Daya. For that reason, I have no qualms about attending this function, even though I know that this function consists of people from different ideologies, different thinking, uh, all, all kinds of opinions. But then, no two persons think alike. Some people say the intelligent brain thinks alike. But I thought, especially in leadership and followership, the more intelligent the people are, the more diverse are their opinion. And uh, I think for this morning, we should be expecting diverse opinions from everybody. Another reason why I would like to attend this function is because <clears throat> quite many, many years ago, I was given a chance to stop, to, to give a talk. I think it was somewhere in Miri here. But that was very much confined to PRS members, where I spoke about the role of NGOs and the relationship, or shall I care, the symbiosis of NGOs and politicians or NGOs and leaders. Because I believe, unlike many other people, I believe that there is a role, a very important role that NGOs can play. Some communities use political parties uh, to play the role of NGO. The reason is that Without having me to say it, you all know very well that within the constraints of the end, there are certain things that we can say, there are certain things that we can do, that there are some things that we can only say within the four walls. But once you are outside, the rule is you got to go by the decision of the whole group, even if you differ inside the four walls. That is the arrangement in Barisan National. And because of that, there are things that we feel very concerned about, that we feel very gravely about, and yet you can't voice it. Sometimes it is uh, naughty people like me who dare to say certain things, but uh, you've got to compensate it by some other means to show that you are not a rebel. I'll tell you one story of what happened, which many of you try to do through your WhatsApp group and through your activities as NGOs. We have, for many years now, after uh, Dato Uka, Dato Max, I was still a deputy minister then, became full ministers. They set up when I, by urging the prime minister on the need to set up a Daya technique. Daya and Bumi Putra Minority Technical Committee. And it was set up. Uh, Dr. Sri Najib was very understanding, okay, there was a need for that. Of course, unfortunately, uh, before I was in that committee, uh, it included non-minority in the end, so it became a bit diluted in its ability to further our cause. Anyway, I forgot in what session was it, in what uh, meeting was it. We wanted to get the data of how many, uh, what are the breakdowns of scholarships and uh, opportunities given to students by Mara. Okay. During that particular meeting, during the request made, being made, the answer was, okay, we will give you. In the next meeting, we were told that uh, the Mara officers are all in the state and we played a fair rule and as a result we don't have data on the various communities. All right. So we told them we still want the data. So they promised that in the next meeting they will provide it. Then come the next meeting. These are meetings in the you no, know, three to six months in total. So in the next meeting, when we asked for the data, we were told that the officers were not around. No Mara officers were around. Fine. 
Then come the, I think it was something like the fourth time. Um, in the fourth meeting, I mean for the technical meeting there was many meetings. I'm talking about a series of times when we were requesting for that data. So during the fourth request, they told us, uh, we don't need it. You don't have to do that because the, uh, it is not possible. No, no, they don't say they don't need it. They can't do it. They said they cannot do it because it is not possible to identify the various communities. That is where I scream at the officer. I said, if you are knowledgeable enough about Sarawak, about Sabah, it is very, very easy to identify which community belongs to, which, who belongs to which community. If you know it is Anna, if you know it is a Christian name, it is definitely not a Muslim, not a Malanau, not a Malay. And that's basically what we want. And that is where, again, they say, you know, we go completely by Mary. That is where I say, you go by Mary. Let me tell you a story. When I was in primary six, I was in a very remote area. And I was the only one who passed primary six. One school, which was near town, I forgot it was 30 or 60 of them, I think 60 St. Bernard School, Dala. 100% pass. Well, I was put in three rivers in one class together with St. Bernard School student. First term, out of 38, I was number 19 from rural school. Second term, at that time we didn't use semester, we used term. Second term, after I was exposed to three months of town life, I became number four, the fourth. The final term in Form 1, I was number three. There was a re-streaming in Form 2, Science Art. By the time we reached Form 2, I said, I did not hear anywhere. I could see anywhere. Jacob Ketiban, not the Dengar Tanyo, not the Kangao. The person who was number one in my class before Form 1. Said, Tell me, how do you explain that? You said, you go by Mary. What that means is, because of the disadvantaged position that we have being from rural area, it takes time for us to catch up and therefore you cannot compare absolutely the points, the scores, the result of rural students with town students. And that is why we need those data. But anyway, until today they never did it. Finally, during the main technical committee chaired by the Prime Minister, the data came out then. Uh, I think the Prime Minister must have heard of that, either through Idris Yala or uh, somebody, one of the officers in the EPU and so on. So the, the data was there. And that is where I was a bit sad in the sense that, you know, one of the issues you always came up with is, in fact, one of the guidelines you asked me to speak on is on that. What are the opportunities? Or how, how many scholarships are given to our daya? We don't have any meeting yet this year. But uh, we are going to have one soon. As of 2017, 2015 and 2016, according to their report, we were not able to fill up our quota. But then, don't misunderstand this. The quota that they're talking about are for specific courses, you know. Uh, they have a certain guideline. The government has a guideline which every community has to follow. The one we understand. Uh, they call it critical courses. They call it the Ivy League institution. And then uh, there are two categories that we are given quota for. One is for overseas scholarship. The other one is for uh, internal inside the country's uh, scholarship. At the same time, we are allowed also if this is a contract, we are allowed to bid for the scholarship in, in the common pool. <coughs> this uh, 5%, I think, that is specifically given quota for Sabah and Sarawak. And according to the result, based on the various criteria there, we were not able to fill that. I received, or I read, I came across some comments in your WhatsApp that you did not get certain scholarship. Please, from now onward, you give me the detail. I have been trying 
to catch these officers if they have lied to us. If they have lied to us, believe me, the Prime Minister will manage it some other ways. Our problem is, it's not really at the ministerial level, it is at the officers' level. The officers are the ones that's giving us a lot of problems. Even when I was the Deputy Minister for Rural Development, if I want to ask for the data from them, they will not release it. That is our problem. Unfortunately, it is not in my capacity, not in anybody's capacity, to say, okay, this guy we recruit and put inside Mara. The recruitment is done by them. You can cry, you can scream, but it is still up to them whether they listen or not. So, all that we need is always evidence. Evidence, evidence. I mean, one thing that evidence. Somebody wrote in a WhatsApp quite recently, some months ago. A father and well, a daughter or a son got a scholarship from Mara. I'm, some of my facts may be wrong, but the picture will be there. They got a scholarship, and then the second time, uh, when they went to see uh, Mara officers in KL, there they were told that you are not Bumi Putra. Mara is only for Bumi Putra. But they claim that they are Bumi Putra, and they are, I think they are Dayak or whatever. In that case, they were told to go back to Sarawak and get certification from the government. The government here can be district office or residence office or somebody in the state secretary's office. And according to the report, I'm sure some of you have read that, they went back to Sarawak. It took them a couple of days, they got it, returned to Nanyong, and showed that certification. And the story that I read was, oh, the time has lapsed. And I did ask for, can you give me the evidence? Meaning, the letter of approval, the letter of certification, and the rejection by Mara. Because I am very sure that this coming meeting, again they will say, we don't fulfill that, we don't fill up the whole quota. Now, during one of the earlier meetings, I have said, it, is, it may not be possible because the report is, we don't have enough people qualified to fill the quota. I say, maybe this year we don't have enough, maybe last year we have enough, maybe next year we have enough, this year we don't have enough. Can I suggest that we don't confine it to any particular year? If this year we don't have enough people to fill the quota, but if next year we have excess, can we reclaim the previous year's quota? Uh, Dr. Sina Jim said, yes. So, that is what I need. Now, this is just one of the stories. There are many other things if I, if I were to tell you. Uh, in 2013, I was appointed as a federal minister, but one of the last to be given any portfolio. And before I was given or assigned any portfolio, uh, a group of us, not the whole PRS Supreme Council members, I think there were about seven or eight of us. Uh, of course, the president, uh, I was there, and then Dr. Yusuf Salang, most of the MPs, and the non MPs, I think, uh, Dr. Ufrenisam and probably Doris Brody were there. Uh, I was assigned to speak after Tan Si Chen came up with the opening remark. I was assigned to speak on behalf of the group. And I will repeat to you almost verbatim what I said during that time. I said, Sir, we will meet in the PM at the PM's office. Sir, the situation in Sarawak among the Dayak community, in particular the Ibang, is what I call the equivalent of a hand grenade. 